Chances are you may have also felt that earthquake. A ton of people in southern New England were calling us today saying that they felt it themselves. Earlier today, we spoke with a local expert to learn more about what happened. Dr. Brian Savage with URI's Department of Geosciences. Thank you for being here with us today. You're welcome. So you study seismic activity. How rare is it to see a magnitude of this size on the East Coast? We typically never hear about this. Yeah, so it's it's pretty rare to see an earthquake of, of a magnitude of this size, so 4.8. Um, but it's not unheard of. We've had large earthquakes uh, that have happened in the past. So that was, of course, the 2011 Virginia earthquake that happened. Uh, it was about a magnitude 5.8. Um, that one damaged the Washington Monument. Um, and there was a magnitude 7 that happened in Charleston um, probably 100 and some odd years ago uh, that we can still see remnants of, of the damage down in Charleston, South Carolina. So it's not unheard of that we have um, reasonably sized events, um, but it is somewhat unheard of that they get to the magnitude that this one was. Um, we still have smaller events that have, that have been reported on um, previously. Yeah, we've uh, seen several of the smaller events, but uh, Brian, in the terms of this size, how does this compare to the earthquakes that we see on the West Coast where it's much more likely? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting that the, an earthquake of this size probably would get some news on, on the West Coast. Um, but it, depending on where it was, it may not have been, it may not be reported on um, as well as it is on the East Coast. So there's a couple different reasons why. The East Coast has a higher population density. And so if an earthquake occurs on the East Coast, there's a good likelihood that somebody will be living near that or working near that particular epicenter. Um, the other is that the rocks on the East Coast transmit the energy from site from earthquakes much better than they do on the west coast and it has to do with the geology and the tectonic history of the rocks that make up either the west coast or the east coast so transmitting the energy better here on the east coast does that have anything to do with why people felt it all the way in rhode island massachusetts when this happened in new jersey yep that's that's the primary reason why and it you just keep a lot more amplitude of the, the seismic waves as those waves travel away from, from the earthquake source. And so you can have a much wider range and wider response um, and people feeling it in a, from further afield than they would if they were, let's say, you get the same earthquake on the West Coast. It's very interesting because a lot of people here in Rhode Island saying they felt, you know, their house is shaken. You don't often hear that on the West Coast with uh, some of oh, these yeah. earthquakes. So. Whenever an earthquake happens, of course, aftershocks become a big concern, uh, particularly overseas. We've seen this with countless earthquakes. Is there a chance of that happening? And if so, when does that kind of taper off where it's no longer a risk? So there's there's a likelihood of having aftershocks, but those aftershocks are likely going to be smaller in magnitude. And the smaller they go in magnitude, the more that we're going to have. So we might get a one magnitude three that follows this, and then maybe 10 magnitude twos that follow that. But there's a probably a probably a good likelihood that nobody's going to feel those magnitude twos unless they're really, really close to the earthquake. And, you know, they might occur over the next week or, or two weeks or so. Okay, but shouldn't be a big concern overall. <laughs> All right, Dr. Savage, thank you so much for joining us and uh, providing us with that information. We appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.